Today in Odin and Raider, we're going to be doing some auto tiling. Yes, we've got tile sets and we're going to lay them on top of each other. And I'm going to tell you the ins and outs of how to do auto tiles and the different tile sets there are available for you to use and design yourself. As always, there's going to be a GitHub code repository for you to use and just copy as it's under MIT license or for you just to learn yourself. I try and make them simple as possible. First of all, let's go to BorrisTheBrave.com, which has this fantastic array of different type of tile sets that are available to use and how you actually can create an auto tiler with them. And we'll start off with the basic one, which is the Bob tile set. This is a combination of 47 tiles in total. Uh, and it looks like this. Uh, and here is the minimum layout for it. In order for us to find the right tile, we just need to check the corners and the edges. So in this case, we check north and northwest for example on what it should be and if they are true it returns a value because we're using a bit mask a maximum value of 255 and that will give us all possible 47 combinations technically 256 uh, because there is also the idea there's also that there's duplicates but in the end we only need 47 it's like all the possible ones a quick overlay on how i'm generating the world well first of all i'm just going to use a perlin noise we can just Give it whatever values we want and it will give it 0, 1 depending on its noise value and we'll also be have using Raylib to obviously render it all as usual. So I have the tile set in and then when I render it, uh, run it for you, it will look like this and there it is, H2 value. So we can see the 255 is the center and any of the edges and so forth, we get those different combinations. When we look at the code, when we want to make a bit mass, we just need to loop through the world and provide it the key that we're looking for. So in this case, we just check, is that tile that we have that are currently on a key? If so, then we should get that auto tile bit. And if for this case, we're doing the blob tile set, which is this one at the bottom, we can check that we just check each segment. And then we also want to check, hey, if the other ones are this, then this one should be zero. Uh, because if we do, we don't want every 256 possible combinations. We just want to trim it down to the 47. So in this specific example, bit mass one is technically the northeast one. So if we check if that value is greater than zero, so i.e. there is a tile there, but in this case the north one and the east one is both next to it are just still zero, so not a value. We don't need to give it a value. There's nothing there's nothing to be rendered in that segment. And so we just do that with the rest of the tiles as well. We see we set them to be zero if they're the if the corner ones are there, but the ones next to it. And with those, we just simply add all those values up and that just gives us the auto tile bit. And so when we return it, we just give it the value and then we set it to the grid we want it to be. And so that's actually simply it. We're just giving it, in this case, I have an initializer, which is just the width and height of the world. And then also giving it the tile enum as well to initialize it. And then we just give, simply give our map we've got, give it the key we got in this case, and it will just return the new grid. We can just simply loop through it. Now, when finding what tile to render, that's also really easy. In this case, I can just set it to be based on the images that I showed, that original Wang BL. If we go back on this, we see that the numbers are associated with it. Therefore, we can actually just simply return those X and Y positions. And as you can see, it's a very long switch statement because there's 47 different combinations, but we just provided the auto tile. It'll give us the X, Y position. And that means we can just return and render what tile it needs to be back in our render texture up here and whatever way you can do it, you can do it your way. So in this case, I have the cell size, how much and its location, etc. So that is pretty easy, isn't it? Uh, but 47 tiles, quite a lot. Maybe you want to take that a little bit further or let's say reduce it. We can actually, in fact, see here that we have 15 choices. Some are just actually duplicates and we can just simply rotate them. Well, you can do that, but there's also the way of using a two edge style tile set or a two corner type tile set now a two edge tile set is kind of in the name you just simply check the edges so you just check right next to it you don't check the corners so again here's the image i have of the 2e much smaller 15 and i can just pass it in again the same values this time swap it to wang edge and have that and now when we run it we get this we got the now the 2e style uh, tile set you can see it gives a different kind of result as in it's more angled as it's like a side with like the diamonds the way in the image you can see that wang edge is far easier it's just simply for and all we have to do is just check the neighboring and that is it that is it's very simple and it works pretty well wang 2c is much more of a blob like tile set and it gives us more square like edges 
and when we look at the results we can see that we get a more grid like state but you can obviously change it to be your style like this could be in fact a more of a, a diagonal kind of thing or these could be a straight one as I've seen in the first example we see that this grass is a Wang 2C which we'll get to just a little bit later. When handling Wang corners we do want to still actually kind of check the edges we just want to check the edges in case for example this tile the the corner ones do not exist uh, or just check them anyway it doesn't really matter because if there are two on the edges and there's none in the corner then we're going to render nothing there and it's not going to look right so we may as well just check the edges as well there so in this case both north and east if they do exist and that happens to be that the corner one doesn't exist that means we will still render that corner one otherwise it's going to be a blank spot and it's not going to look right something else is slightly different previously when we were creating the bisque mask we just checked if that grid wheel one is currently a has the key in this case we can ignore that and just check if it's a wang corner we don't need to otherwise again we get kind of un because we're checking the corners rather than the edges it results in it's not creating a proper layer in some instances when it should so for example usually the corner pieces uh, there should be one there well that's pretty great but what if i have usually multiple tile sets of different backgrounds and all sorts well you can take it a step further and have three edge tile sets but as you can see we are getting exponentially big and you can even go further by four order tiles and it's getting a little bit ridiculous but if we do read at the bottom of this page it does talk about well if we can we can use the two x wang tiles in order to get the possible right combinations and have them layered on top of each other when we deal with multiple tile sets we want to run through each key and get each bit value and as you can see that can get quite uh, recursive and very large if you have a many many different tile sets so you do want to mitigate how many tile sets are available or find just a little bit better ways of optimizing it in this case we just simply go through the possible keys that we have so we don't loop through the world normally but then once we made it to the last one we then just simply loop through the keys and add them to this array now if you actually just simply you can just draw all the possible combinations there are or at least have the background to be all matching the same color because when I, for example, run a Wang 2E and see that we get it works, but and we get this kind of like border effect, like almost like they're rivers. So it is quite nice. So we can see where the change happens. And so if you want to keep it as optimized as possible and not have to draw this like multi-layered approach, if you're having transparent backgrounds, is to use this approach. There are a few black squares, uh, but we can obviously just simply fill that out with a, a blue color, for example. But for my really simple approach, I have this thing called the layer struct structure, and that simply just contains the E and its auto tile bit value, and that's really just it. And so we just simply root through, and we do do a specific check for one corner we'll get to later, and we just simply return the value, and we also check in that grid size, which is that layer struct I said. If the length is just zero, so there's nothing in it, we can then just add the first layer out. We just add on to it. And so we can think of it as a performance issue that if we have many different tile sets on what a lot of them are interacting on the same tile, you could, for example, you're looping through perhaps one tile about four times in the sort of worst case scenario. Uh, hopefully that should be very unlikely depending on how you're generating the world. And I think really the average case is probably two and where you're just checking between borders and most of the time just one, there's nothing going to be else there. When we deal with Wang corners, we can specifically use a slightly different way of checking, which is using marching squares, which is allows us to overlay the other tile sets with transparent ones. And so far, it really only just works for the Wang corner tile sets that marching squares works really well with. Essentially, with marching squares, we're checking from the top left corner rather than checking from the center, then checking each corners. So from the top left, we check right, then bottom right then underneath us and also just the tile we're also on us ourselves we also check if that existing one and so it's really just the same results and we can see it's just nice and simple and sweet and it still gives us the same results but i have to slightly reorder the values because the bitmaps do change on their positioning uh so in this case the top left is obviously still eight so we just slightly reorder it uh, but we still can get the same value and when i run this with the grass one for example it will look nice so you can see right here i now have three different values zero one and two and when i'm checking it i create this mess layer with the array of ints i have the different type of keys i'm passing into one corner because that's what it is 
for the tile locations because we're dealing with multiple ones as we see here they're not going to be in the same location so we just simply add in like we can imagine that the index matches the key and we give it its start position so for example the stone one that's actually position x4 and so when it comes to designing it we just simply add the locations together and that will just give us its new location so when we just simply run it like usual it runs completely perfectly fine like that and there you go these are transparent backgrounds but we are layering on top of them and they look pretty good you do need to be aware though that when dealing with this is that we can imagine it depends on the tile order so if our we're first checking our key that the first one is grass then grass is going to be you can imagine it rendered at the bottom layer therefore the edges will be overwritten by the one next to it so again if i show you the running example we can see that uh, the grass edges are being overwritten by the water edges because water is appearing later and therefore it's the upper higher level but for the stone we can see that the stone was the one rendered first therefore the grass edges uh, overruled it that's just something important to notice but you can get some really nice awesome visual effects so this you know it looks like a very convincing world we have here the way it's overlaying another idea that i was kind of working on, but i in in that ignored it for now was to create a whole new texture so you, you would get the correct tile you wanted then create a hard create an image base of it then load that image and then you just give it that tile location rather than taking this recursive approach which is less performant and said we'll just take up a bit more ram by having a bit of a larger texture image which is just going to be i think more efficient because uh ram is very plentiful these days and we're really not taking up much like a few extra bits for bytes perhaps and really that's it that's all there is to creating an auto tiler it's actually very simple really the complexity comes in just trying to figure out your the way you want to layer each different type of tile set whether you want to draw the combinations or you want to try a transparent one that does raise the complexity but getting the initial one it's very simple you can take it even further do check out this website borrowed to brave as because you can even take it further you can reduce it even more depending on the type of thing you're building so this one is just five six tiles or even just one four tiles you can go even further and it has a glossary of just different type of tile sets you can go for uh you can even go for the classic single a lock tile which is just a different tile it's just two and then you can get maze like stuff uh, you can really make some very interesting things as again demonstrated here uh, this one where it looks 3d uh, is actually just a wang 2c tile set uh, which is very cool and it produces results like that so you can make some interesting art if you're good with it but if you enjoyed that video then do subscribe to my channel and also check out some of my other videos like this one creating procedural paths slash rose and odin and Raylib. That one's a good one in my opinion, and I'll see you in more future videos.